Welcome to the Wake Before the Day podcast with my parents, Clark and Bobby. We'll talk about the Bible and the Holy Spirit adventures. Thanks for listening. Hey, what's up, friends and family? Thanks for hopping on the podcast. And you know, it's your Monday. And so you know I got another very special guest in the house, our very own Rachel Thomas. Hello. Hello. (laughs) All right, Rachel, I've said this. I know for those listening, you're like, all right, he's saying it again. But many of our podcast listeners don't attend church. Oh, okay. uh, it's not Emmanuel. And right. so some of them are in different parts of the country, even other parts of the world. And so I want you to take a minute and tell everybody a little bit about who you are. What do you do here? Tell us about your family. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Rachel, Rachel Thomas. Uh, people call me Ray, Ray as Ray. well. Yeah. Um, and I'm a singer, a musician, worship leader here. And I get to be a part of that awesome Uh, worship team. It's actually so fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And my husband is also a worship leader and music director for the band. And we have three boys, which is crazy. Boys are crazy. Some of my favorite names too. Yes. Josiah, Isaiah, and Judah. Yeah. Strong, strong Old Testament names names there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, I mean... I don't know what, yeah. what more I, Ra- Rachel and Q, w- w- I guess on one hand, we have tons of talented musicians, but you guys just continue to blow me away with the mm. amount of like ta- talent and giftedness God gave you. Mm. So like your husband, he is on Sunday talking to an earpiece microphone, telling <laughs> everybody what to do yeah. while he is playing the keyboard and singing and like doing some other instrument over here. Yeah. And Rachel, sometimes he plays bass too. Yeah. It's, and it's Rachel's crazy. playing different instruments and singing. And what sound were you making the other day? I was looking around the room like, is that a bird or is that a trombone? The trumpet. Or the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm looking around the Secret room. Secret hidden going, talent. Yes. Yeah, going, it's not very hidden though. What, Everybody, what? like I just do it all. I bust it out all the time. Oh, I'm glad you when do. When I get bored. But I was a newbie at the time because I'm going, where on earth? Who's playing a trumpet? Like, is there some kid in the corner? You really had never heard me no, do that? No, I hadn't. Wow. So I was looking around and it, it took me a while to realize... Oh, it's Rachel on stage. But everybody else didn't even pay any attention because they hear it all the time. Yeah, I do it all the time. They, they're just like... Oh, they just, I was so confused. Yeah. I was so confused. But yeah. anyways, as you, as you read and write and create songs, yeah. I'm just curious, how long does it take you to write a song? It is like so different. Like, so like I can literally sit at the piano sometimes and like I wrote a song to like Psalm 103 verse one through five, and it like literally came out as I was playing. Like I didn't try and write it. When did you write that, by the way? A couple months ago. You should give it, I think Andy Hernandez is preaching on Psalm 103, verses one through five in July. Okay. So tell him. Yeah, remember that. Um, So sometimes it literally just comes like that. Or like I'll be in the shower and like a whole chorus will come. Cool. And And then later I have to like, flesh out the verses, which can be really hard. So then sometimes it's like one part of the song comes and the other parts come later. And then sometimes like the song that I actually have out on Spotify that I wrote for my husband, that took like months because I had the chorus right away, but like fleshing out the lyrics. Mm -hmm. I had pretty, I normally come up with the musical ideas first, like the melodies, Mm -hmm. like kind of catchy, but then the words can take a really long time, especially if it's like something important, like what I want to say to my husband about our love story. So it's like, yes. Yeah. So it just depends. It can be like a day or like months. Oh, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So have you always known you're going to, you wanted to be a worship leader? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know for sure. Like I wanted to be a worship leader kind of as my profession, but I knew that I wanted to be a singer for okay. sure. Like at age, it was a uh, fifth grade talent show. Nice. That I decided. What did you sing? I sang "My Heart Will Go On," Celine? Titanic, oh, and li- literally Celine like Dion, the people. It was like a moment. Okay, I know it sounds crazy, but it was a moment in fifth grade. The whole place like stood standing ovation. I swear, what? I like I like went somewhere else when I sang the song, and um, it was just me and my mom accompanying me on piano. And like years later, when I got to high school, so I left 
public school. I was in public school, elementary, left for like three or four years, came back for high school. And yeah. people would be like, yo, that's the girl that sang Titanic. Like they knew me. As Titanic girl? Yes. From like four <laughs> years before. That's so cool. Because it was just a moment. And I remember after that, I thought like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Because before that time, I would get really nervous before I sang hmm. and like even have like stomach issues, be like really almost sick. Oh no. Um, but for some reason that time it was like, I don't know. And um, and I did grow up singing in church. So I was okay. always like leading worship or a lot of times I would do like the special song. So yeah. I'd come out and like do the like, you know, Jackie Velasquez and oh, like I Crystal remember. Lewis and all She's those people, wow, Rachel Lampa, yep. all those people. Like I would sing all their like new songs at church. And um, then I started like writing some songs and would do that at church. Cool. Um, but I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know if I'd actually I, I like swore I would never work at a church or hmm. marry anyone that did, though. I, that was like a promise I made that. God in college. That, that's where there's an old saying. It. It's like you want to have God laugh, tell him yeah, your plans. Tell him your plans. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like for sure. Like I might sing at a church occasionally, but I will not work at a church because I grew up in it, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is just too much. Um, but I was at some really unhealthy churches okay. early in life, so uh, it's been a great experience since I have been working. Yeah, at a yeah, church, for so. sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then, let's say I'm gonna flip the question on you. If you weren't a worship leader and your kids are raised or whatever, and you could have another occupation, and you didn't have to go back to school, you could just have it. Mm -hmm. What would you want to do? Any other job? Yeah, I've been thinking about actually um, music therapy. Ooh. So like working with people with disabilities or yeah. like people in hospital settings or kids with special needs and doing music. with. I'm actually still looking into it as maybe like something to do as well yeah. as what I, I do. Do you ever watch the show This Is Us? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is that I what Kate that does? Show. No, but she does music but it's similar. Therapy with kids? Kind of. Yeah, I mean, she works at a at a handicap music school. Music school. But okay. yeah, it would be similar to that. But it could be like a whole range of things. It could be okay. people like really emotionally disturbed, or it could be like um, uh, to help elderly patients with their memory. Ooh, that's cool. Like using music as a yeah. way of remembering, or using music as a way of teaching like speech to mm. kids who like can't speak. I should do that. My remember where I put my keys. Yeah, yeah. Put them exactly. on the top of the fridge. And I somehow <laughs> always forget and I lose them. Channel your inner boy band. Yeah, Just for sure. Channel your inner boy band. Tearing yeah. up my heart. When yeah. I'm... Okay. I like that. I like that. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I'm I hope you explore that. it and see what's what's up with that. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, hey, let's dive into the, the scripture. Today for the church's reading plan, Ray, we're yep. in Acts chapter seven. All right. And this is pretty much the whole chapter for the most part is about Stephen in the Sanhedrin. And I'll just kick it over to you initially. Like, what stands out to you from this reading today? I mean, Stephen pretty much just stands up. And first of all, like, I just feel like he was very bold in that he just gave a whole summary of like the whole Old Testament. Oh, yes, he did. And it was very, like, very well narrated. And the summary was just like incredible. And I'm, I'm literally reading, I'm like, wow, like, I feel like he was telling the Sanhedrin who was accusing him of mm. blasphemy, like, this is how well I know yeah. <laughs> the story of God throughout history. Yeah. Like, first of all, as you come at me, just know that I know all of this. Like, yes. I've studied this too, you know, sure. like I'm not, I'm Gonna not just walked coming. on or something. Right, here. right. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and I was impressed with how well he knew scripture and just, again, remembering how important it is to know, like really have that in you and have that yeah. that under that like summary kind of understanding of the story yeah. of God not just like little verses here and there but like really have this the story for sure you know so I was just impressed with that and I thought it was also like you know a way for him to then get to the point that he wanted to make but first he had to just let them know yeah like yeah. I know you guys are all scholars in this but I am too yeah oh yeah because I think what's being fought about when he is seized in chapter six was basically like what's real worship. And they yeah. were claiming you're blaspheming Moses and the Old Testament law and what real yeah. worship is supposed to look like. And it's basically, like you said, he gives them the whole Old Testament narrative here. But then for me, what stood out kind of towards the end of it mm -hmm. is, is in verses like verse 49, for instance, he's talking about like the temple. Yeah. 48, 49. He says, however, the most high does not live in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says. Yeah. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? 
has not my hand made all these things. So I, essentially what he's saying is it's so much bigger than the temple building and yeah. all these Old Testament rituals you guys are following. Yeah. Because Jesus taught us that worship is worship in spirit and truth. Yeah. Right? To the woman at the well. And so he's saying, you just got to get your head outside the walls of the temple. Yeah. God made the You're sun and the it. stars and the moon and ultimately people. Yeah. Like made in the image of God. That's a temple. Yeah. And we're called to be worshipers of God, which is... You know, and then he drops verse 51 on them. Really slapped yeah. them. Stiff neck people. Yeah. Your hearts and your ears are uncircumcised. Tell our kids that next time they don't listen. Yeah. Stiff neck boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> Uncircumcise your ears. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he goodness. does not hold back. He definitely like tells them, tells them what it is and what they're missing and how like mm-hmm. basically you guys are missing it. Like you are missing the main point. Yeah. Um, It's just so, and it sounds so much like Jesus and what he would say to them as well, you know? Um, But yeah, he definitely didn't hold back. He definitely went. Yeah. I feel like he's cracking down on the whole circumcision, Old Testament law, ritual, temple, because I'm thinking of Acts 2, which we just read last week. And that is talking about how now like this promise and the gift of this Holy Spirit at Pentecost is given Mm -hmm. to every man and woman, every boy and girl that's in the Christian community. Yeah. And so he's basically saying like, it's about your heart. Yeah. It's not about whether someone's circumcised or not, or about whether you have read all these books and have memorized. It's yeah. about like being a real worshiper of God. Yeah. And um, that yeah, I really took that away. Just like, hmm, that's a good a good point to remember there. Yeah. When for you, when it comes to like Stephen and being bold to, like I don't know, share the faith and walk in grace and truth. You know, you kind of brought that up saying that it stuck out to me. Just as you walk yeah. in grace and truth, what do you think about that? And Stephen had a lot of courage standing up yeah. to these people and not backing down. I think it's easy to like gravitate toward one or the other. I think what some... Are, what would you say you are? I think I'm more like lean towards grace. And I would say and I'm more love, tru- I'm truth. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, I'm looking for a way that I don't have to dress anything head on or like ruffle any confront. feathers yeah, or confront. Yeah. Like I, I do a lot of avoiding conflict in my own life and with my, I think even like within myself and with um, those closest to mm-hmm. me, like even in my family. Um, and that's just something that God's been convicting me of that like you can't just, li- you can't live in grace and the fullness of God without truth. Like you need have to have both. Yes. And it can't just be love without truth because then it's not even really grace. Like exactly. sometimes when I've apologized for things that I haven't meant, that's not even an apology. Yeah. Like that's that's actually a lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Totally. So you can't even walk in grace without there being truth at the same time. So yeah. I just, yeah, I definitely saw how he was just unwavering to speak the truth. For sure. Um when he was asked. I mean, yeah. they asked him. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm going to give you my answer. I'm going to give you my answer. Yes. <laughs> like, I hope you're ready for it. You that's, know? that's true. But, I have like that old image in my head. I mean, theologians and pastors have used it forever, but like of a rowboat. Like if you just have grace, you're basically rowing with one mm, hand and you're just going to be going in circles. Yeah. Or if you just have truth, you're going in circles. But yeah. when you have grace and truth is when you're able to like move forward. Actually go. Yeah. Go, go. places. Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. So I guess for you yeah. lis- you listeners right now, maybe do a self-assessment and think, am I 80% grace, 20% truth? Am I 75% mm-hmm. truth and 25% gr- grace? But how yeah. do you find that balance? Yeah, and it's Sarah, a balance. God, how do I hold on to truth, but also be gracious? Yeah. Because another part of this chapter that stands out to me is his retelling of the Old Testament story. It seems as like an invitation to learn from their past mistakes. Right. He's like, look, here's where we missed it with Abraham. Here's where we missed yeah. it with Moses. Yeah. Here's where we missed it with a yeah, da, 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 da. It just keeps yeah. going on. And there's a, there's a point where we all have to look back and learn, whether it's from our own story mm-hmm. or it's from our parents and like this, mm-hmm. the family stuff has been given to us. Yeah. Or it's just from like American history, church history, history in general. Like we don't want to make the same mistakes. Yeah. And the Sanhedrin at this point is clearly not willing to say, Maybe we missed it back there. We should have teachable hearts right. and learn. And then right. thus they go and murder the guy. Right. So for me, again, I'm thinking, how can I have a teachable spirit, mm. look back and learn so I don't make the same mistakes that other people did? It's yeah. avoidable. Yeah. You know? That's so good. Mm. Thanks, yep. Stephen. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Keeping y- it real. Yeah. You know, someday, we'll, I think Ken said this in a sermon a while back. We'll get to meet these people. 
Yeah. Like Stephen, like, what was that like, man? Like what was yeah. going on? And yeah. the setting, he didn't back down. Oh, I also just thought it was incredible how um, he said, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Mm -hmm. And then he just told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And they were just like infuriated at that. But I was just picturing him doing that and thinking like, wow, like you can't, you, you wouldn't say that in that setting unless you really saw that. And I wonder what he saw exactly. You know, I was thinking yeah. like, did he literally see it like, like, okay, here's the clouds. And then like, I see this, a vision or, you know what I yeah. mean? Or was he just like in the spirit? Like, yeah. I don't know, but it, I wondered like that. Pretty be really cool. cool and, and yeah. convincing one way or another for him to die. Because you look right. at all I'm, the early church, like they were almost all given a chance to recant and go, hey, look, guys, this whole resurrection stuff, if you guys just say, I made it up, we'll let you live. Yeah. And they're all like, no, like you can't rip my arms off or oh, stone me or yeah. kill me. And it's like, that's not an easy decision to make. No. I mean, it, in one sense it is, but it's not a fun one by any no. means. It's a painful one, but they, mo most of them stuck to their story yeah. and are like, this is real to me. Yeah. And these people aren't like seeking violence. They're peacemakers. And they're right. like, I'm sorry, I can't. It's not, it's not like they're out hurting people. Yeah. They're not criminal. Right. They're like, look, I'm, I'm giving food to the poor. And yeah. by the way, Jesus is real. And like, we're going to kill you. Okay. I know. It's just like, I, I know. I don't even like to put myself in their place. So that's, oh. Yeah. But I like what you said about the vision. Yeah. Clearly it was real. Yeah. Real enough for him to and, go. And then the other thing is just at the very end, you know, that, even though he stuck it to him and was like, you guys are wrong, you're missing it. He still at the end had grace in his heart yeah. to say, but God, please don't charge them with this. And I was like, Whoa, sounds familiar. that's that grace and truth. Yeah, definitely sounds familiar. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but there's that balance. There's that like, yeah. he's speaking truth, but his heart was still mm -hmm. mercy and mm -hmm. grace, right? Totally. Awesome. Well, yeah. that's all I have. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, it's so it's fun. Just fun. Thanks for listening and hanging out yeah. with us today. And again, Rachel, thank you for being here. Yep. Uh, this is I'm cool. excited to learn Anytime. more about music therapy too. Yeah. That sounds cool. I'm still learning about it myself. For sure. I'm intrigued. All right. Well, thank you. And to everybody else, we'll be back Wednesday and Friday, the rest of this week and Wednesday nights, right? It's two days from now if you're listening live. Yeah. Rachel often leads our prayer and healing and worship service. Yes, come. So if you ever want to come rest or you want to pray and do some artistic creativity, yeah. Nora's got the art station set up. Such Receive a some powerful prayer. time, really. Yeah. You're invited. All right. So God bless you. Have a great week. Bye. The Lord bless you and keep you. Don't make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give him his peace. Have a great day.